We're looking at the legislative agenda before Congress, before members head home for the Easter break. Joining us is Annie Tin, Capitol Hill producer for C-SPAN. We're also joined by Bob Cusack, managing editor for The Hill. Meredith Shiner, staff writer at Roll Call, and Tim Stark, staff writer at Congressional Quarterly. Thanks to all of you for being here. Annie Tin, let's start with you. What's on the legislative agenda for the House and Senate before they head home shortly? Well, currently the Senate is trying to finish up work on a small business capital bill. This what, bill was passed by the House last week, and now the Senate is trying to finish work so that it can go to the president's desk. The Senate just invoked cloture on the underlying bill, so Harry Reid, the Senate Majority Leader, is, has every expectation that they can finish the bill this evening. The House is working on a bill that aims to um, chip away at the health care overhaul bill that's actually law. Uh, this is, they're trying to undo the independent payment advisory board. And they're pairing that provision with a medical malpractice provisions. So the House is going to spend today and tomorrow working on that bill with the aim of passing that bill to repeal the IPAB uh, by day's end tomorrow. Bob Cusack, managing editor for The Hill, uh, there's been so much written about how the focus is outside of Washington right now on the political campaign trail, but, but what is the expectation for productivity and accomplishing things in this next time period? Well, I mean, I think this is the last <clears throat> bit of bipartisanship you're going to see for quite some time. You have uh, the Stock Act, a congressional insider trading bill that would ban that activity. Uh, basically on track to go to President Obama's desk. Uh, as Annie mentioned, you have this uh, jobs bill, uh, House Republicans call it a jobs bill, and Senate Democrats call it an IPO bill. But there is a, a, a lot of bipartisan support for that measure. And, and there could be uh, very well a highway extension bill that goes to President Obama's desk, though Senate Democrats are pressing uh, for a longer term bill. But after this period, then I think we really get into the election season. We have a lot of members who are in primary battles. Uh, we have a, uh, a partisan budget battle that is looming in the House. So we do see some bipartisanship, but basically it's not going to last for too long. Meredith Shiner, talk to us about the politics of what's happening right now. Winners or losers, and uh, what do the Democrats versus the Republicans hope to leave town and, and tell their constituents they've accomplished? Well, I think touching off what Bob had said uh, just a few moments ago, I think that there's an internal tension right now, uh, and I think it's a result of having a divided government. Uh, one of my colleagues this morning wrote about uh, one of the top Republicans in the House, Kevin McCarthy, actually putting some blame on Senate Republicans for not being able to do things, because both parties have different agendas. Obviously, Senate Republicans are trying to win back that chamber, and House Republicans are trying to prove that they can govern the chamber that they have. And so what you're seeing now is a contrast between the House passing bills, sending several jobs bills, including the one that's pending right now, to the Senate with some presidential support and hoping that something gets done. But obviously, uh, Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell has some incentive to try to pr prove that the Senate Democrats don't know how to run the Senate. And so every issue you're seeing now, the politics are intensified. Yes, because we're getting into election season. Yes, because we're running out of major bills to fight over. Um, but I think that you will see these fights get intensified in ways that you wouldn't have seen maybe even last spring because of the politics that are involved. Um, as Annie was talking about, there's a bill on the floor right now. It's a small business bill. It passed overwhelmingly on a bipartisan vote from the House. The Senate has it now. Um, but, the, but Majority Leader Reid has added two amendments to it, and so it's really set off Republicans who say, why don't you just pass the bill as it is? If you amend it, it'll have to go back to the House. They want to get it done. They want to have it into law. And so every battle you're seeing now, it's becoming very much a tit for tat. So for people like us, it means that we're watching the very minute internal politics within each caucus. But for the overwhelming larger public that's looking to Washington in election season, they're trying to see who's doing what and who's doing what effectively in both parties and both chambers have a lot to prove in that regard. Tim Starks, you've been reporting extensively at Congressional Quarterly about cybersecurity and legislation. Uh, are we seeing any unification in the House and Senate on this issue? It, it, we, we seem to get just a little closer all the time. Uh, this, uh, the, the most recent developments were yesterday when 
uh, Senator Lieberman, who has, has one of the major cybersecurity bills, and Senator McCain, who has one of the major cybersecurity bills. Senator Lieberman said they are actually finally having talks to resolve their differences over that. Um, the House is actually seemingly a little closer because uh, there's a little bit more of a um, GOP control that, that makes things a bit more unified. But what they're looking at, according to uh, Mac Thornberry, who, who headed up the, the Republican task force on cybersecurity, is that they're looking at uh, bringing a series of smaller bills to the floor next month. And that's, you know, that's when Lieberman hopes to do the same thing. Basically, there's a chance that they won't be able to find a compromise between these two bills because they are different on a very major question. A lot of the uh, infrastructure that, that could be attacked, like the electricity grid uh, or nuclear power plants, control systems that are, that are in charge of those, um, those networks are privately owned. And, and there's an attempt by some of the uh, people on the Senate side, led by Lieberman, to impose some security standards on those businesses. The McCain bill would not do that at all. So there's a, there's a problem with the idea that they might be able to get a compromise, but what they might do is instead just bring both bills to the floor and see which wins. Annie Tin, Afghanistan is being talked about a lot on Capitol Hill. We saw General Allen testify uh, this week. Uh, what are you hearing from members of Congress about where to go next? Well, the, uh, General Allen testified before the House Armed Services Committee yesterday, and he's expected to testify before Senate Armed Services tomorrow. And I believe that there, there might be some closed door meetings uh, with him today. So. Um, just lot, I'm hearing lots of members are concerned about the continuation of our military operations in Afghanistan, and many are calling for uh, an end to those operations. But we'll just have to wait and see how members um, take their feelings and put them into law, into legislative language. Looking at the Republican budget that uh, that came out this week, the Paul Ryan budget, Bob Cusack, how much traction did that get, and and uh, where is it expected to, to really go? How could it change the conversation right now about the budget? It's an election year budget. It is is meant to uh, lay out a contrast between what House Republicans want to do, uh, as well uh, to that of what President Obama wants to do with the budget. And uh, these budget battles are always partisan battles, and certainly. Uh, we've seen that this week. The thing for John Boehner is that he has had trouble unifying his conference, whether it be on uh, transportation or the payroll tax a couple months ago. They are hoping to unify behind Paul Ryan's new budget, uh, which would uh, significantly cut the deficit, but Democrats have attacked it for its Medicare provisions as well as uh, not taxing millionaires. So that's going to be the battle as we go forward between now and the election, which party is more unified Last year, four Republicans defected on Paul Ryan's old budget. This year, I think that number is going to be a little bit higher, but I do think House Republicans will be able to pass this measure, which will not be becoming law because the Senate Democrats are not going to be doing a budget. They said the debt limit deal from last year is their uh, budget, but there are major differences between Democrats and Republicans on Paul Ryan's budget, and that's going to be the battle uh, going into the, well into the spring and into November. Tim Starks, as, as we watch what Congress does before they go on the Easter break, what are you going to be looking for uh, as far as signals of, of, of what they plan to take up and accomplish for the rest of the year? What are some of the agenda items that, that you're really watching carefully? Just on national security, Afghanistan is, is one to watch, but it's probably a little further away than this most immediate period. Um, you know, some of it might actually come out in the, some of the budget discussions that, that we've talked about here. Um, last year, some of the troops were reduced from Iraq to make room for some additional military spending on baseline accounts. So that's something that is a little farther out. Um, there's there's room to see about uh, trying to work out a compromise on cybersecurity. Some of these uh, budget proposals on defense and homeland security spending um, will, you know, some of these battle lines will be drawn a little bit more sharply. But I think that most of the stuff that would be happening on national security is a little farther out. Um, you know, toward either toward after the break or toward the end of the year. It's just that this is a period where people are beginning to lay down some of their introductory ideas about what they want to do. And Mayor Shiner, anything that might keep Congress here in Washington? Sometimes we see things come down to the deadline. What has to get accomplished this week before they can uh, can wrap things up? Well, I, I think going back to what we had talked about earlier, this transportation extension is something that could potentially keep them in town because there is this tension about this full year bill that passed the Senate. Right, uh, the transportation bill was actually one of the bigger PR mistakes by Speaker Boehner on the House side this year. He had really pushed hard for his version of the bill 
and um, Kevin McCarthy who counts his votes and we can't get votes for this bill. Uh, because the main problem that, that, that Boehner has, and I think it's something that Bob referred to earlier, is that in a lot of these major initiatives that they try to pass, they lose votes on the right for the very conservative members who just don't believe in government spending at all. And then they lose some moderates who believe that the, the measures are a little bit too serious. And so the Senate, in lieu of waiting for the House to pass its bill, pass its own measure. And they're very, very reluctant to pass another temporary extension because they believe that the funds that they had appropriated for the longer term bill won't be available if they continue to do these shorter term bills. And so you'll see a standoff and you'll have to see who blinks first, whether or not if the House Republicans lay down a line and say, we don't want to actually pass this full extension, whether the Senate will let all of those provisions expire without doing a temporary provision. Another thing you might want to watch out for is um, the Senate might do um, a, an author, a reauthorization of an anti-women's violence bill. And there could be some issues in getting votes for that because there are several Republicans who believe that it just should be a state's issue. Um, but Democrats, after the large contraception fight that was started because of the HHH mandate put forward by the administration and fought by several Republicans, including Senator Roy Blunt, feel like women's issues are very important for them and it's a winning issue. So that's why you might see the timing of this reauthorization come to the floor before the vacation. And Annie Tin with C-SPAN, we, we've got a little bit more time here. Next week, sure. are there hearings that we expect to be watching, things that we are, that you are, are, are especially paying attention to uh, before we head into the break? So end of this well, week leading into next week. I would say, yeah, so the Congress, both chambers are aiming to get out for a two-week spring break by next week. So not this week, but next week. Correct. And uh, I'd just like to expand upon what Meredith was talking about regarding the surface transportation bill. The, the, the bill that the Senate passed is a two-year reauthorization. Uh, the, the plan that the House Republicans are trying, uh, that they were working on, was a five-year bill. Um, you know, the, the authorizers, the people who set transportation policy, much prefer the five-year version, the longer-term version. But the problem is, um, the, like like Meredith said, the, the, the conservatives are, are really concerned about the level of spending. It's a five-year, $260 billion bill. Mm. So the House just didn't have the votes um, amongst Republicans to pass the five-year bill. So the Speaker Boehner floated the idea of doing a shorter reauthorization for 18 months, but that lost um, support among those who prefer the longer term reauthorization. So the, it's the, the House that needs to decide whether they're going to be able to uh, pass the Senate's two year bill or come up with a short-term extension. And of course, Harry Reid signaled yesterday, he was very clear, he has no inclination whatsoever to do a, a short-term, like a two month, a one month or two month, or you know, a several month extension. So if, if I had to guess hmm. um, that settling, you know, the surface transportation issue will be the one issue that will um, keep members here at the end of next week and perhaps into the weekend. And Annie, any big hearings you're looking for next week you'll be watching? Well, the thing that I'll be watching for next week would be um, the House floor consideration of the House Republican budget resolution. Okay. So this is the, the spending blueprint. This is the, the, the thing that sets uh, the, the spending levels that will allow the dozen appropriations bills to come through both chambers uh, into the summer and into the fall. This is either the 12 annual spending bills that fund the federal government. So um, uh, that is going to probably consume much of the House floor time next week. Annie Tin, Capitol Hill producer for C-SPAN. We were also joined by Bob Cusack, managing editor for The Hill, Meredith Shiner, staff writer at Roll Call, and Tim Stark, staff writer at Congressional Quarterly. Thank you all so much. We've been talking about what to expect on the legislative agenda for Congress before they expect to head out on their Easter break in about a week and a half.